important part. I will sometimes uh, switch to show you some code snippets. If you have any question, feel free to disturb me or ask uh, in the chat. I will most probably look into the chat uh, later on. And without further ado, let's start. So the topic of uh, my presentation is uh, move semantics in C++ uh, behind the scenes, as well as uh, some ways uh, how C++ compilation may be optimized in terms of avoiding uh, copying uh, objects. The first question is, uh, why do I even uh, prepare a presentation about this topic? And uh, yeah, there is some backstory indeed behind this topic. It uh, comes from uh, my early days of uh, studies at the university, where a friend of mine wrote a code in uh, like the first uh, C++ uh, 11 uh, times and this code should not compile by any way and don't do things it was supposed to do but somehow it works and it was maybe a combination of theory and practice when something is working even though it shouldn't and we have no idea why it's like this so I dug deeper into this topic. This topic turned out to be a large rabbit hole. And today we don't have much time. It's only around half an hour to present everything. But I would like to just spark an interest and maybe try to explain why sometimes compilers behave like they do. So the agenda for today is uh, telling a bit about moving or uh, evading copying objects before modern C++ times. Uh, short theory behind the standard move, uh, values and uh, references, some things uh, stan uh, standard move allows us to do, and uh, maybe if we have some time left, uh, we will talk about uh, perfect forwarding a bit uh, as well. Yeah. And uh, why is it uh, even a topic? It's uh, really easy to describe in like standard words, uh, what does it mean to move uh, some objects? And yeah, indeed it's uh, easy. The trouble is that uh, C++ and C aren't, let's say, modern uh, languages. It's not uh, Rust where you just assign one value to other. And from what I remember, it means that uh, the value was moved and fine, we're done with the topic. It's uh, much more complicated and uh, adding this uh, functionality to modern C++ needed to somehow adjust the existing uh, language infrastructure to make it uh, possible. And uh, I guess that many of you had a situation where some people thought that uh, things which are easy to describe in words or to uh, like draw them are easy to implement and uh, it turned out that it's uh, not the case. It's usually not the case. So uh, let's start a bit with the history. Here a spoiler alert is uh, that uh, there were some uh, neat optimization mechanisms already available in C++ 03 standard from what I remember. It uh, was not so that uh, everything before modern C++ was terrible and uh, not optimized. First of all, let's consider such a fragment, which is uh, more or less uh, the code my friend wrote uh, back in the days, uh, which uh, was not supposed to do things uh, fine and perform well. So here we have uh, some value and let's assume it's a structure or a class. It's returned and then we just uh, create uh, another value of the same time type and we pass the return uh, value of this function to this uh, object. Uh, what we may think. If we are not familiar with C++ at all, we think that, okay, here is only one object created and uh, it's fine. 
if we are a bit more familiar, we know that uh, C++ uh, has a large performance bottleneck when it comes to temporary objects, meaning that uh, they need to be stored somewhere and uh, then they need to be cloned and uh, destroyed. But uh, let's not just uh, talk about code, let's maybe launch it. I will just need a confirmation from you if you see my Godbolt screen right now. It's this example. Yeah, we can see it. Great. So here it is the best way to learn some things, uh, creating a talking object uh, like the structure. It has a basic constructor, destructor, copy constructor, move constructor and an assignment operator. Here are some methods. And uh, our most uh, naive uh, approach would be just to return some object of type A. What happens here? Well, we just create an object, then uh, pass it and then uh, destroy it. It's fine, this function, uh, as we see, takes zero arguments, but the question is, is, is it really zero arguments? And it turns out that uh, not really, because uh, a neat thing named uh, return value optimization is applied here, meaning that if at compile time, we know that uh, there will be an object created in a specified uh, place, we will just create it uh, once and then we will secretly or under the cover pass the location of this object. It uh, may be also a named return value optimization where we create uh, this object as a local variable. Theoretically here, we are out of the scope of this function. It should be destroyed and uh, dead and gone, but is it really? Let's make the second function happen. Uh, nope, here also it was just created and then destroyed. But uh, here someone may think happily that, okay, it's really easy. We don't have to mess with any temporary objects. However, it's uh, not always the case. We may also jump into a pit. expensive uh, operation, meaning that uh, if it's uh, just a small object with uh, no actual value or no actual uh, content, we are fine. But uh, if it's a really heavy object, uh, performing uh, deep copies of this object may take some time. It may also need that uh, we need uh, to get some information from the operating system. And uh, it, uh, it takes resources as well as, as uh, it takes time. Another cool thing uh, available in uh, C++ plus plus before mod before modern C++ plus plus is a so-called uh, copy elision, meaning that if we want uh, to perform some method taking our structure as an argument, we won't need to create uh, a temporary here, which is uh, then passed and created as another temporary. However, not in uh, all the cases it's possible to use it. Imagine if, uh, again, we have some uh, value which is uh, not uh, possible to be determined at compilation time. 
we don't get uh, just a constructor and a destructor. We need to perform a copy operation. Then again, it's just a motivational example. It's uh, not a real-time situation where we may operate some really large uh, array objects or strings. So uh, these uh, things are, uh, ah, okay. One more thing is uh, that uh, return value optimization takes place even if uh, our constructors has some side effects, which may be a problem if uh, side effect is uh, really significant and uh, needs to be performed. Luckily, in Clang, uh, we can disable uh, return value optimization and uh, copy a lesion by a compiler flag if it's really needed in our case. And let's go back to the presentation. There is uh, one more terrible, terrible and uh, obsolete uh, structure, which was a precursor of a unique pointer. It was an auto pointer. Uh, well, it had uh, good sides and uh, bad sides. Uh, good thing is that it was the first attempt or one of the first attempts in the old C++ to uh, implement something like uh, move uh, semantics. However, it uh, did it uh, by usage of a copy operation, meaning that uh, it did a copy operation it, and uh, it just uh, deleted the value from the, from the object uh, from which uh, it uh, copied uh, things. So we took the exclusive ownership of uh, what uh, it was pointing to. And as you can imagine, using of uh, this uh, construction got uh, depreciated uh, pretty fast. And uh, right now, the same functionality, but uh, much more safe, is uh, provided by a uh, unique pointer. We can, uh, I also have an example for that in uh, Godbolt. Uh, let's uh, jump back. Uh, it's not the main object of the presentation, but it may be interesting. Of course, you get a lot of warnings if you even attempt to use it. And uh, yeah, many weird things happen. And here also the return value is uh, pretty messy. What happened in here is uh, that I may also move this assignment operation here. No, I cannot. <laughs> uh, we create uh, some uh, object, uh, which is a string. Here we perform an assignment operation. And uh, most probably what happens is that uh, as now AP2 contains this test value, we can easily get its value, but uh, AP1 contains some undetermined things or let's say some rubbish. And it's uh, not safe to use it. Uh, theoretically, its uh, main purpose was to auto delete values when it comes out of the scope, but uh, luckily uh, the auto keyword uh, does uh, different, uh, much more useful things right now. And we aren't bound, aren't bound to use uh, this construction anymore which is indeed great. Yeah, going back to the presentation, there were several more examples uh, of uh, attempts to either move things uh, or to not uh, make uh, copies uh, whenever possible. There were some early swap implementations on containers, as well as a list splice method, which I cannot comment on as I never used it. And uh, yeah, let's go to the theory part, which uh, you usually don't uh, get to use unless you get a really specific compiler errors or you look uh, under the mask of how is move semantics actually implemented. 
That's why it's this uh, iceberg. You are usually on the top of this iceberg unless a uh, situation or your specific project needs you to go deeper and uh, deeper. And the deeper you go, the more, let's say, not everything is uh, what it seems, uh, situations uh, you may witness. <laughs> so generally, back in uh, the old, uh, not modern C++, there were two definitions of expressions. Each expression was either an L value or R value. Generally, L values were on the left and R values were on the right, as they name say L values or R values. And uh, you may uh, figure out uh, some of their characteristics by looking at these two expressions. So is there something uh, you may say about uh, L values or L val R values uh, right now when you are looking at these expressions? Yeah, you might think for a moment. Is there are some uh, traits uh, which are only specific to L values and uh, R values, at least uh, in these uh, old uh, times where things used to be much more simple. So. L value is a value which points to some specific memory location. You may also say that it has an address uh, which it is bound to, and usually it is uh, some uh, named variable. R value may be a temporary value which is uh, stored in some temporary memory location. It sometimes may be a literal like a number or some string literal or a character, something like that. And uh, there are some uh, limits uh, regarding L values and uh, R values mostly boiling down to the thing that you cannot do everything with R value that you could uh, theoretically do with an R value. Here is uh, some motiv motivational example. We can declare an integer variable and uh, we can uh, take some pointer which is assigned to its value. But hey, someone may say, uh, a is our L value in the first line. So how is it even possible that it's an R value in the second case? Yeah. The question uh, is, uh, what is uh, this operator doing? And uh, the ampersand operator takes uh, L value and uh, makes it a uh, R value. So it may do some sort of a conversion. Uh, it may also be done by some arithmetical operators like uh, addition or subtraction. So uh, thanks to these operators, we may treat uh, L values, so uh, some named variables, as if they were R values. And uh, we may even do things which uh, look a bit uh, weird, uh, like uh, we may create a method that returns uh, some uh, class uh, instance, and then we may put it uh, on the left side of uh, the expression. The question is, why are we even talking about it? Let's move with the topic. Are we allowed to do this operation? that we create uh, some reference and we assign a literal to it. The intuition says uh, nope, but there is one interesting hack I may show you now. What we want to do here is uh, to convert an R value, as I said about the ampersand operator, to the L value. Let's go back to bolt and copy it. So bam, now we will get an interesting error in the GCC. I will also get back to 
part that we may still have some invalid initialization of non-const reference of type uh, integer reference from an R value. Okay, it's non-const, so let's do it constant. Does it work now? Yeah, it does. We may think that it's a super cool life hack uh, to perform this conversion of R value to L value, but uh, in fact, uh, what the compiler did is it uh, created an uh, L value as it const, meaning that uh, its value cannot be changed in the program lifetime. So it's uh, not really this type of conversion we are interested in getting. So we may think we are this guy, but uh, not right now. And uh, the thing is that uh, this uh, pretty simple division changed in modern C++. How did this change then? There, we, there was a new thing named R value reference, which allows to modify the temporary object from the right side of the expression as if it wasn't uh, temporary. So if we have uh, some object which is uh, left to be destroyed, we can now capture it or let's say steal it and uh, let's say prolongate its uh, lifetime and use it uh, as if it was a stable L value object with a name, address and different neat functionalities. And uh, this uh, new functionality is basically the basic of uh, move uh, semantics in modern C++. And uh, yeah, in the words of uh, Scott Myers, uh, now we have a really cool reference uh, that can bind uh, both L values as well as uh, R values. As you remember from a few minutes ago, the previous uh, reference uh, wasn't such, a, let's say, versatile. Uh, there is also a nice uh, functionality that we can create references to other references and uh, they are collapsing, uh, meaning that uh, reference uh, and that only universal reference to another universal reference remains an universal reference. In other cases, uh, it's transformed to a reference uh, to an L value. It will be important uh, later on, but uh, we will get back to this. So, what uh, is uh, move semantics even doing? Is there any physical move taking place? The answer is uh, no. Standard move uh, doesn't uh, move uh, things in the memory. Uh, all it does and it was really interesting uh, for me to find out back in the days, is that it uh, casts, it's a simple static cast indeed, its argument to an R value reference. So that uh, we are using this uh, new universal reference to allow some object uh, to be moved. As a result, we can, uh, let's say, steal value from an uh, L value, or we can uh, make a value which is uh, soon to be expired to live uh, longer. And uh, we don't need to create a new object uh, to copy this value, then to pass uh, all its content and so on. So as a result, we don't waste time and we use uh, temporaries which were already created so that we don't need to do it again. And we save a lot of memory, resources and time. Uh, but it's uh, not always the best thing to do. You need to remember that. Now, the trouble is that uh, this division of uh, R values and L values, which was nice and simple, doesn't uh, actually work uh, anymore. As now there are more aspects uh, that uh, each expression uh, needs uh, to answer. First thing is 
Thus, uh, this object has an identity, meaning that uh, there's a name of the object and its specific uh, address in memory or pointer to this address, uh, like in the previous case. But there is also another question uh, if uh, it can be moved uh, from. So we don't have uh, R values and L values anymore. We have a new concept of expiring values. And uh, there are pure values, uh, general L values and R values, which are now X values and is pure values. What are the expiring values then? X values are a result of binding an R value reference to an object. So these are objects uh, which uh, were to be expired, but they were captured and uh, their lifetime uh, is uh, longer now and they are still valid. And the interesting thing of X values is that they are R values and L values at the same time. For some reason, previous R values were now renamed to pure values, meaning mostly what previously R values went. But now uh, we are in a much more complicated situation, meaning that we don't have all values and R values. We have also expiring values, which can be on both sides of the expression. Uh, do I have a neat example now? Let me check. Ah, yeah, I have a nice example with uh, benchmarks, which we can switch to right now. So here is uh, some uh, example of uh, move semantics and uh, let's say lack of move semantics uh, and uh, the comparison of their performance. Right now, let's assume that we have some uh, small object, rather a structure, which only has size and some sort of a capacity. And uh, we need uh, to keep track of the capacity if we are adding uh, things to this uh, object. It also has uh, an addi uh, addition operator where we need to create some temporary right now just uh, to get a placeholder for the object that we are adding. Okay, and we don't have the possibility to perform move operation right now. So uh, our object uh, is added uh, several times. And uh, as we know, C and as I said before, C++ has uh, some sort of a problem with uh, good handling of uh, temporary values, unless, uh, unless many things about them are known at uh, compilation time. So what we do here and uh, what uh, do we measure here for the execution time? is a time of performing uh, this uh, addition operation of uh, four struct structure elements. We see that just uh, not to get lost, uh, we are adding one to two to three to four then. And uh, now we don't have uh, move uh, semantics in place. We are just uh, adding uh, two object, meaning that uh, we need to always create some temporaries and uh, and uh, of course uh, these are talking objects meaning that each allocation and uh, deallocation is uh, I may also add uh, at uh, when we do some uh, operation if it helps. Uh, yeah, right now in the first step, 
We are doing allocation for all the objects as they are created. So far, so good. And uh, what is the difference is uh, what takes place uh, during the addition. We are creating a temporary object uh, for the result of adding one to two, then one to two to three, and uh, to adding one, two, three, and four. And then these objects are deallocated. Uh, keep track of the elapsed time. In this case, it's around uh, five uh, microseconds. Okay, let's uh, check uh, what could happen if instead of creating these temporaries, we'll, we'll use uh, move semantics. I most probably need to comment out this part. Uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> okay, so here, number of objects which were created is a bit uh, smaller, but the execution time is a bit bigger. What if our, our structure is much larger? Here, the time is around eight micros microseconds. But uh, if we just handle temporaries, it's much uh, larger. It's 12, so the performance uh, role, role uh, gets uh, more and more significant. The larger the object is, uh, meaning that uh, the more deep copies uh, we need to perform. And uh, as I said uh, before, each uh, such operation is uh, very expensive uh, from uh, execution time point of view. So the less, the less uh, such operations we do, the better. Yeah, I'm going back to the presentation. Uh, yeah, as I already said, uh, standard move uh, doesn't uh, move anything. Uh, it casts its argument uh, so that it's allowed to be moved from, but it doesn't guarantee a move uh, operation. Uh, it's uh, not a silver bullet that allows to do everything uh, fast, uh, meaning that we have uh, different optimization uh, mechanisms such as uh, return value optimization and uh, copy elision that I presented uh, before. But uh, if it's safe to be used, uh, it uh, allows us to improve uh, the performance. And uh, yeah, as I also mentioned before, we avoid uh, doing uh, deep copies uh, when passing lar ob large objects around, uh, especially if they are handled as uh, temporaries, which uh, are created uh, anyway. And uh, now also what is possible is uh, management of uh, ownership of uh, such objects. And uh, yeah, as I said uh, a moment ago, it's uh, not always safe to do moves. Uh, uh, one more hint is uh, that uh, move constructor should be no except uh, because uh, it will boost the performance uh, even more. Yeah, but when is it uh, even safe to move objects? when uh, we are capturing uh, value from a temporary object or when the user just wants to move some uh, value, uh, especially if uh, it's an L value, meaning that uh, there was some object, uh, now uh, the owner of this object uh, needs to change so that the user just wants to move it. And we are fine with that. Uh, here, the downside is uh, that uh, the compiler doesn't care about the object from which the move uh, started. This object uh, needs to be in some uh, known but uh, not uh, defined state, meaning that, uh, especially in a multi thread environment, this object uh, may contain. Uh, 
let's say, no, may contain some null values, but it's uh, not uh, warranted. Also, if uh, the move constructor is uh, a custom one, we never uh, can assume that uh, this object is uh, fully empty. The best practice is just uh, not to use uh, this uh, object uh, anymore. Or if we want to use, we need to declare its uh, values uh, anyhow so that uh, they are known. And uh, yeah, basically the object which uh, int which interests us now is uh, the new object to which the move uh, took place. Yeah. Also, as uh, now we are allowed to move things, uh, we have uh, two new functionalities uh, we need to think about uh, when creating class objects. Uh, it's a move constructor and move assignment operator. Good thing is uh, that uh, we can just uh, disable both of them if we don't want our class to be moved, as uh, there are some objects which shouldn't be moved, as well as some objects which uh, shouldn't be copied. Imagine what could happen if there was some unique token, for example, or some mutex, and somebody wanted to copy it. It would be a recipe for a complete disaster in the code. And uh, yeah, one more topic I wanted to talk about is a perfect forwarding uh, mechanism. Uh, here, a definition is uh, really well long, uh, but uh, it uh, boils down to this question. As I said before, uh, there is a reference collapsing, meaning that a reference to universal reference or universal reference to a reference always becomes an L-value reference. But in some cases, we want to evade this uh, functionality, especially if we want to use some sort of a lazy evaluation meaning that we uh, don't want to call the method right now. We just want to forward the arguments several times so that the last receiver will actually take, uh, will actually evaluate uh, the expression and we want to preserve these values. Okay, good example is a perfect factory forwarding its uh, arguments uh, to some underlying client constructor without uh, any reference collapsing. And uh, yeah, let's switch to Godbolt one more time with the third example. Yeah, bam. Here we want, it's uh, also a really simple template uh, which should work with both L values like here a variable, as well as uh, our values. We don't have this thing right now. Okay, so uh, we may have the first case, which uh, works for L values only, but it won't work if we pass the literal to this uh, template uh, method. Once more, we look at the compiler error. Okay, it's the non-const thing again. So we do our super life hack I was talking about a moment ago. But the downside is that here we pass a const argument and uh, in some cases uh, we might not want to do this. So there is a cool thing named standard forward, which allows us uh, to bind uh, L value as well as uh, R value references without uh, changing their, let's say, reference-ness, meaning that they are still either universal uh, or non-universal R value as uh, we decided it at first. 
Yeah, it's really nice because uh, it allows for some sort of a lazy evaluation in uh, C++. Okay, these are all topics uh, for today. I assume that we didn't have enough time to talk about uh, all the details and exceptions of uh, these mechanisms. For those interested in further reading, I included uh, many nice uh, standard documents uh, in the bibliography to this short lecture so that you can uh, figure out things on your own as well. They are really nice written, not in the academic language, so it's highly recommended. And thanks to you, so now I wait for your, for your questions. <laughs> Okay, no questions. Uh -huh. We have one question. Can we assume that compiler is obligated to optimize move reference semantics in some cases? I know that there was a change in C17 that some optimization became, let's say, unofficially mandatory. Generally, uh, I'm always afraid of assuming that uh, compiler does something uh, each time, unless we explicitly pass it as an let's say optimization flag. So it's uh, tricky to always say that uh, this uh, semantics uh, is uh, always uh, op optimized out. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm thinking about when we want uh, our value for template uh, argument. Okay, uh, Boris, uh, could you elaborate more? Yeah, you yeah, it's a universal reference. Uh, okay, so uh, in this case, uh, what you want to achieve is uh, your template argument to only work for uh, our value. Am I right? Yeah. Okay, it's an interesting case. I haven't. Uh, thought about it uh, before what i would do here like in a really nice approach i would uh, disable this uh, case uh, to work uh, with uh, l uh, with uh, l value reference by some enable if but it may be a wrong approach What would be better for specialization between const t and uh, universal reference to t? Who wins? Uh, well, if you specialize for const uh, t, uh, the downside is that it's, well, a const t, meaning that uh, if there are some side effects for the t, which uh, should take place, you are not allowed to do them in the body of this function. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, generally better to use the universal reference uh, in this case. Does RVO and RVO work if we use if context in instead of uh, common uh, if? Uh, I guess that by definition of uh, const expression, it uh, it should work as a const expr means that uh, the value of the if expression is known at the uh, compile time. 
I never remember the syntax for const expr if, but we may try now. I just need to duplicate. Do get a cheat sheet and the first example. So back to the first example I was showing and to get a with condition. Where was it? Yeah, most probably. Okay, I don't need to add some Yep, typical life coding thing. Uh, warning, uh, I will just uh, compile it uh, offline uh, and uh, get back to you. A function parameter with unknown value cannot be used in constant expression. Okay, so the uh, problem is that we get a compile, uh, compiler error here because this condition is not a constant expression. What if now? Okay, it turns out that uh, at least uh, in this uh, naive approach I was taking in modifying this example, it's uh, not uh, possible to use it, Alexi. Even though theoretically it's known at uh, compilation time uh, anyway. Okay, maybe someone else have questions. However, if we don't pass a variable, it works fine, but but still, yeah, still two objects are created. And uh, without uh, a const expert, but just by passing uh, value, there are much more operations created and uh, move operation is involved. Same in this case, but if we do a constant expression, there are Okay, I'm not sharing. I thought I'm sharing, but I'm not. Anyway, I will just paste the example in the chat. Later on, they will be shared, but uh, here I was modifying the get a with condition method. Thank you, Natalia. No questions?